Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today I want to talk about hypothyroidism or low thyroid. So thyroid disease or hypothyroidism is a very common condition, uh, much more prevalent in women than men, and more prevalent as you get older into your 40s and 50s. Low thyroid, your thyroid sits right here at the front of your neck. Uh, low thyroid can be associated with many things, but fatigue and weight gain are probably the two most common complaints in the office that would prompt us to check your thyroid, but constipation. Uh, period or menstrual irregularities, hair, skin, and nail changes, um, all can be thyroid related, cold intolerance as well. If there's a family history of low thyroid, then you're more prone to have thyroid disease as well. So the basic test we'll do in the office is called a TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, and that's the most common test and what we almost always use exclusively to diagnose and to treat your thyroid condition, but there are a couple of exceptions. So the way we look at thyroid disease is we have thyroid hormone T4 and T3, which are come from the thyroid gland, and that's not what we actually typically measure. So everything else we measure the blood levels of hormone, but this one we actually measure your TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So your pituitary gland in the base of your brain monitors how much thyroid hormone is in your bloodstream and it's responsible for telling your thyroid whether it should make more or less hormone. So thyroid stimulating hormone from your pituitary gland. So if your thyroid hormone is low or if you had your thyroid out or radioactive iodine for your thyroid and your thyroid didn't produce hormone anymore, then your blood levels would drop, your brain would recognize this and release more TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone if you had too much thyroid hormone an overactive thyroid gland or if you were taking too much medication you'd have too much thyroid medicine in your blood and your body would say I want less so it has less thyroid stimulating hormone so it's opposite when you get your blood test results if you see a low TSH and you're excited that that means low thyroid it's the opposite so a high TSH means lower underactive thyroid and a low TSH means overactive over too much thyroid hormone. A uh, typical range of TSH depends on the lab, but anywhere from about 0.4 to about 4.5, and this number is variable and it's a little bit controversial. So if we look at some labs, they still have old reference ranges of five and a half and six, and that absolutely is in the hypothyroid range. A normal TSH probably should be one or one and a half even in someone without thyroid disease. If we have a TSH above three, then that likely represents hypothyroid very early, and we may not put you on medications, but if your TSH is between three and four and a half, uh, you probably are going to develop hypothyroid, and I would repeat a TSH in about six months. Um, if you're over four and a half, then you definitely have hypothyroidism. When we put you on medications, we monitor the TSH. So say your TSH is 10, your body is shouting that it wants more thyroid hormone, and I put you on Synthroid medication, and I recheck a TSH, and it's one and a half or two, then I'm content that your body is happy with the amount of thyroid hormone that you have, and we will adjust your thyroid medication based on your TSH. So it's typical when we start you on medications that three months afterwards, we do a blood test and check the TSH, and then period periodically adjust your thyroid based on your TSH results. Some people don't feel well on their thyroid hormone and want further testing and we can actually go ahead then measure a free T4 and a T3 level. So the actual measure of the thyroid hormone. So if you have what's called central uh, hypothyroidism, your pituitary gland is not responding, your TSH is going to be low, your pituitary is not making TSH even though you have low thyroid. It's not real common but it does happen so we can do an actual hormone level. Level. Uh, sometimes we can adjust T4 and T3 separately. So you are on hormone, your TSH is normal, but you don't feel well. We go in and check a T4 and T3, and I can give you separate hormones individually and raise or lower one or the other to try and make you feel better. Synthroid would be the most common thyroid hormone, that's synthetic T4, and we don't actually give you T3 because your body can convert T4 into T3, so I give you just one of the two hormones, and your body will make as much 
T3 as it needs, and then we have T4 and T3. Some people don't do that very well, and they either keep more of their hormone as T4 or more of it as T3, and they have a little bit of an imbalance, and Synthroid by itself is not enough. So we can add T3 hormones separately. So I give you some Synthroid T4, and then I give you some T3 hormone and measure those two blood levels and adjust them independently. Armor Thyroid is another common option. So Armor Thyroid is animal derived uh, from the Armor Meat Company. Originally they got the thyroid glands of animals and they dried them and turned them into thyroid hormones. So what's different about Armor Thyroid is it's actually T4 and T3 together. So some people swear that Armor Thyroid makes them feel better and this may be because we're giving them more T3. The problem with Armor Thyroid is twofold. One, animals have a higher concentration of T3 than humans do, so oftentimes when I give you armor, I'm giving you too much T3 hormone and I can't control that. The problem becomes the T3 cannot be converted back to T4. So I told you if I give you Synthroid, that's T4, your body takes some of the T4 and converts it into T3, and I don't have to give you both hormones. If I gave you just T3 hormone, you would have no T4 because your body cannot take T3 and convert it to T4. Likewise, if I give you armor with some T4 but too much T3, your body can't take the excess T3 and turn it into T4. So there are some limitations to armor thyroid. It is a good drug in some people, but not for the majority of people. And the ability to adjust the dose is going to be a little bit more limited with armor thyroid. The other problem is, is people will be, diag will be diagnosed with hypothyroid. They come in, they weigh 300 pounds, they eat at McDonald's, they don't exercise. And I incidentally determine that they're hypothyroidism and they think that's going to be the end of all of life's woes. So uh, I put them on thyroid hormone and I correct their thyroid and they they still weigh 300 pounds, they still don't exercise, and they still eat at McDonald's and wonder why the thyroid hormone didn't cure all of their problems. So what I try to tell people is, is that treating your thyroid will only correct the problems that are related to hypothyroid. So if you're overweight because you eat McDonald's and you don't exercise, taking thyroid medication is not going to help. I'll be happy to do the blood work and check T4 and check T3 and make some adjustments to your thyroid, but you cannot hang all of your problems on on thyroid if we make that diagnosis and that's why that's one of the more common um, tests we do in the office is people will come in and say I'm tired lots of people are tired not related to the thyroid and lots of people come in and complain of weight gain and they're not gaining weight because of their thyroid so they're disappointed when their thyroid tests normal and that's not this simple answer to their problems or when they are hypothyroid and I fix it and they didn't lose weight and they're still tired because that wasn't the answer so Thyroid disease, very common. Um, generally speaking, very easy to treat. There are some subtleties of it, so if you don't feel well, you probably either should see a physician that uh, is well-versed in thyroid or an endocrinologist who would be well-versed in thyroid as well, and you can talk about T4 and T3 and dosing range of thyroid um, and early hypothyroid and the other intricacies, but um, easy to test for, easy to treat. Uh, Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.